Okay, so let's talk a little bit about that load command. The only command you need when you have a map file. The load command is actually pretty limited in its usefulness. You can use it for map files. You should use it for map files. Try to remember that you should use load for map files because otherwise you are earning yourself extra work to do something that was really easy in the first place. Okay, you can also use it for some text files. There's a very specific list of requirements when you are going to use this for text files. Here's that requirements list. Your text file has to contain one and only one data type. Preferably numbers. So when I say data type, what I mean is letters versus numbers. Uh, your file has to contain one and only one of those things. So it's either letters or numbers, no, never both. So that's the next thing. No mixture of letters and numbers. Your numbers in your file must look like a matrix. So all rows must have the same number of columns. columns must have the same number of rows. So if your file beats all of these requirements, so basically it's all numbers, it's set up in rows and columns and all the rows have the same number of columns, all the columns have the same number of rows. So if you meet all these requirements, you can use the load command to load a text file. By the way, your text file, a little aside here on your text file. Your text file could have a few different file extensions. So one of the most common is .text. That's going to tell you it's a text file. Another very common one is .csv. Oftentimes you can export Excel data into a text file format. It will export it and put a .csv as the uh, file extension. What that means is comma separated values. So when you export data into a text file from Excel, it prints them, it prints all the numbers with commas in between them to keep them separate. So that's a CSV file. Sometimes you might see a .dat file. This is a text data file. Um, I try not to give you .dat files just because Windows thinks .dat files are something else. Um, I don't usually work in Windows, so I don't worry about it too much, but 
because I know most of you do, I will try not to send you DAT files just to keep Windows from getting confused, basically. The text files, CSV files, those are very common. Okay, so if you want to load a text file using the load command and you have uh, satisfied all these requirements here, the command to load your text file is going to look like this. So it's the same command that you would use for the map file, but instead you use your text file. So it's load space file name. And that loads your file. What this is going to give you in your workspace is this. In your workspace, you're going to get an array that's called my text data. So it's going to automatically name the array the same name as the text file, except it's going to take off the file extension at the end. So if your file is mytextdata.txt, your array is mytextdata. If your file is called uh, rainfalldata.txt, your array is going to be called rainfalldata. If you don't want to call it that, if you want to call it something else, you can. So Another way you can run this, this command, you can call it, if you want to call it something else, you can call it SE for something else. SE equals load my text data dot text. This will load the file in the same way. And it'll give you an array called SE. Again, you can pick whatever variable name you want. I call it SE for something else, but you can call it anything you want. So these two commands, pick one, and you can use that to import or to read a text file as long as it meets all the requirements here. Both of these methods will do the same thing as far as what the array looks like. The only difference is how it's named. So that's the load command. It's pretty limited. You can use it for map files. You can use it for certain text files. When you could use it, this is these are the commands you use for, for text files. This is the command you use for a map file. Every time. So if you can't necessarily meet all of these requirements, typically the one that's going to cause you trouble is going to be this mixture of letters and numbers. Now when I say mixture, you're not going to have number, number, letter, number, 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 letter, letter, number, number, something like that. It's basically going to be a bunch of words at the top. So metadata, column headers, things like that, followed by all your data. So when I say mixture, we're not talking like a homogeneous mixture. We're talking more like um, header information followed by data. But having header information eliminates load as a potential command. So the file has to be only numbers to use load, basically. If it's not, then we can use a different command. And that command is the import data command. 